Hey everybody, it's Pastor Steve of That Church, and we're here, and we're excited that you're joining us. Hey, if you would, support the gospel by supporting us and pushing subscribe. As we get more subscribers, obviously it, it, it causes something else to happen that you're a part of, and we thank you for doing that. As we get started today in Acts chapter 5, we're going to start off with a word of prayer. This is, these are good things, right? Have notes about what I'm supposed to do. So, Father God, it's you that we have to have. You, Father God, we're, we're hearing your thoughts inside of us as you are directing us. You're being that light before us, and we're following you. We're following your thoughts we're seeing the difference between the world's thoughts and the wicked one's thoughts and your thoughts. And we're choosing your thoughts. We want you more than need, Lord. We see that we want you and we thank you that you want us and that you're here teaching us every single day. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. Are you ready? This is a good day. This is a blessed day. We're we're, we're doing what? How are we viewing Acts? Uh, the Acts, it's, it's the same as the way we viewed Luke. And when we, we look at it from this viewpoint, we're looking for a specific thing, right? What is that specific thing? Are, are, you, are you up with where we're at? This specific thing is we're seeing the anointing and the one carrying that anointing. Now, as we see that that Peter's carrying this anointing, the disciples are carrying this anointing, are you going to do something with that anointing? Yeah. We, we see that we have to do something on purpose. As we purpose to do things, God shows up and does things. Does he just show up and do things without us purposing? He requires a man in the earth to desire him and want him and pray, believe him to do something, and then go out and do it, following his instructions. As we follow God's instructions today, we're seeing it from this viewpoint, and we're going to look at several things here. Now, as, as we see here, right at the beginning, this is how it starts off, but a certain man named Ananias and with his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property. Now, the, the man that sold it right before this is considered Barnabas, right? And, and here we're seeing that Barnabas brought in this money and placed it at the feet of, of, of the apostles, right? And we see these, what is it being used for? To help them preach the gospel, to help them see to themselves all of the disciples that none of them are missing anything there there's there's different things that you see that are happening there that aren't spoken but all of us working together in unity that's what we want you to see and we were seeing that yesterday weren't we everybody as they would work in unity these things, good things were happening. They were looking far. The, the Holy Spirit had to stir them to spill out into the streets. They didn't just spill out into the streets. They, they were in that upper room. If the Holy Spirit didn't stir them to go outside, they wouldn't have went outside. They would have just kept it indoors. But the Holy Spirit wanted it before everybody. And as everybody was already being drawn outside saying, what was that noise? Because I believe everybody heard it. And then they're hearing these as this, this overflow of the Holy Spirit prophesying, declaring the goodness of our God. They are hearing all this. Now, now look, all of these people are hearing these things. Now, as we see all these good things happening, look, look as, as Peter. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart? If we just stop right there, how does a man's heart get filled? 
a man's heart gets filled by taking thoughts. How do you take thoughts? By saying them. Well, I think we should do this. He's talking to his wife. Given, given her, you know, the ability to say, no, I don't, I don't think we better do that. But she went right along with it. And as we see these things happening and transpiring, listen to the rest of what it says here. Satan has filled your heart that you should lie to and attempt to deceive the Holy Spirit. Now, when we're looking at this, is that what happens in a man's heart? He, he takes thought about deceiving somebody else for his benefit. Selfishness, right? As these things are, are brought forward in this, this is what you should see. And should, in violation of your promise, it was in violation to something that he already said. He said before the Holy Spirit. If he hadn't said this before the Holy Spirit, it was his and he could have kept it all. He could have given half. But this man promised to give it all. Showing himself some big man in the church, maybe. You, you see how, how these thoughts are all in here? We, we have to differentiate because we know how we are, right? We, we see that we're, we can be, we've been led the wrong way before, and we know that where are those thoughts coming from? Satan. Satan is filling the hearts of men to be deceptive, to, to look like something, Pr bring forth and present yourself something that you may not be. He was trying to possibly be considered for, you know, being in, brought into this inner circle. I, I'm bringing money here. Is that what Barnabas was doing it for? He's doing it out of being moved by the Holy Spirit to give something over and above, to help out, to be part and partner with God. There's, there's, are, are we doing an offering message here? This is what all this is talking about. This was about an offering. And here, what are you going to do with your offering? Do you, do you see? And then the wife, you know, has the opportunity to confess. The man has the opportunity to confess. What would have happened? But no, they went the same way Adam did. They went the same way Eve did. Do you see, these are, are showing this is what happened in the beginning. Watch what's happening now in your life. Okay, let's move on from that. Verse 10, and then um, instantly she fell down dead. So that isn't where I wanted to go. So, all right. Verse 11, and the whole church... And all others who heard these things were appalled. Great awe and strange terror and dread seized them all. Now, when, when we see this, so nobody else is wanting to be around these people. They're like, whoa, something, something's well outside the box here. Watch as these different things come. And none of those who were not their, of their number, dared to join. Then how wouldn't anybody else join their company? All right. And the, assemb uh, and the assembly uh, and associate with them. But the people held them in high regard and praised and made much of them. Now, made much of them in a good way? I would say so. That's how we would take it. They can make much of them in a bad way. Do you realize there's people out there that have good hearts and people out there in the world that have bad hearts? And more drawn toward doing evil things would be the bad people. More drawn toward doing good things, moving in love. And, and here, you have people out in the world that are both ways. You have people in the church that are both ways. But we're all supposed to be in unity in the church, right? Watch what it says here. Um, 
who acknowledged Jesus as their Savior and devoted themselves to him, joined and gathered with them crowds both of men and women. Maybe I jumped ahead here. Excuse me, I did. Um, let me just read from verse 13. And none of those who were not of their number dared to join and associate with them. But the people held them in with high regard and praise and made much of them. So which one is it? It's saying both here. Then watch what happens. More and more there were being added to the Lord those who believed because the Holy Spirit's working all the while in those good people's hearts, even in the bad people's hearts, bringing conviction in their hearts, bringing conviction about righteousness, right? All of these things the Holy Spirit is doing as we're believing him to do it. He's working in men's hearts. Have you had people come up to you and say, wow, you know, and they just pour out everything that has happened in their life. They're, they're confessing all this stuff before you. What do they do before a priest at a, at a Catholic church? That's because the presence of God is with you so much that these men and women are coming and confessing things before you. Can you retain their sin? Is that what happened here in Ananias and Sapphira? Peter retained their sin and they fell down dead. But he didn't forgive them. Wouldn't it have been something for Peter to say, Ananias and Sapphira, look what you've done. This is exactly what you've done. And to teach all of you all about what's going on here, Hey, is this right or is this wrong? Where is this source coming from? He took thoughts of the wicked one. Satan filled his heart. That's what the Holy Spirit is saying here through Peter. And then what happens? Wouldn't it have been in our day? Well, we'll forgive you, brother. No, no, no. He has to repent, has to have a repentant heart. If you repent, that, that's what we're looking for. That's where we're supposed to be having a heart that's, that's tender toward the Lord. If we see that, man, we've done something wrong, we need to repent to the Father. Asking for forgiveness and receiving your forgiveness. Would he, could, could he have been reinstated then? But these things, he's, he's continuing to be lied to. And here, he's, he's brought, has it brought up to him, give him another chance. You brought this in, laid this at my feet. Uh, the Holy Spirit says, why has Satan filled your heart? Oh, he has, and I repent. Wouldn't have that been better? Okay, let's move past that. So, it says that basically... There's those that wouldn't dare even join themselves. And then there's a bunch being added to their number. And then it comes down in verse 15 and says, So that they even kept carrying out the sick into the streets and placing them on couches and sleeping pads in the hope that as Peter passed by, why, why only Peter? Why is Peter the only one mentioned here? Is he the only one moving in the Spirit? Believing that supernatural signs and wonders can happen through him? Healing and health? What about John? John was right there with him. I believe they both grabbed a hold of him. Maybe only one of them did. But as these things are being said, th these are the things you want to watch. Um, that Peter passed by, at the least his shadow might fall on some of them. As we see that the, the, the shadow, just getting close enough for the shadow to come over this person, that they might receive. They, they, the people were believing something. Was this Peter saying this? Now get all these people out in the street so that as I walk through, you know, if my shadow covers over you, you know, you're going to get it. No, 
it was something the people had in their hearts that that was something they had faith in and as that happened it happened all right now watch what happens next so what amount of time is between these two verses 15 and 16 and the people gathered also from the towns and hamlets around Jerusalem bringing the sick and those troubled uh, with foul spirits and they were all cured they had a big healing meeting I believe everybody got involved and and here as everybody is getting involved everybody has to be somewhat trained and get used to working with the Holy Spirit same in our day if you're not used to working in the, with the Holy Spirit he's the one that will train you as you look to him to work through you as you're looking to him to say what only the father is saying to do only what the father is doing just as jesus did go back to ephesians 5 1 that's talking about us imitating jesus imitating our father as we imitate our god we we are walking and talking just like he would and getting the same results as he would do you see it this is what we're looking for as you are sons and daughters of the Most High, take your place as you take his anointing to your worlds. At his direction, he's Lord. That's what we called him when we got born again, right? Okay. Down here, they get seized, put in jail, and who's working on your behalf along with you? It's angels. Angels at the direction of the Father. Was it something they were believing for? They were staying before their God. Their father sent an angel and then told them to go and declare something. What does he tell them to go and declare? Go and stand in these courts and declare to the people the whole, and the word doctrine there I'm going to leave out, the whole um, word concerning this life the eternal life which Christ revealed Christ revealed this to his disciples to the world that the kingdom of God is is has come near now this kingdoms in these disciples by the Holy Spirit do you see all that and he's saying go and declare about this life that's word straight from the Father through an angel to the disciples as the angel is sent to let them out. Go and stand and take your place. Now, in a, in a couple chapters, Peter's locked up again. And, and here, realize that he's, he's resting and relying on God. Right? And the people are all making intercession for him. And, and one girl believes it's going to happen. Believes that an angel is going to go and release him. Are they talking to his angel? But that woman believes. The, these are things, as we put these, these accounts together, you see how they are progressing in the understanding of what's available to them. Angels are at work for each one of us. And as we see that for today, if you get in trouble, believe for the angels to release you and let you go. Get you out of it. Take you and pass through all the, the military people that would be you know, compounding around you and, and securing you that you could be led forth and let go. Do you see it? As we consider these things, come down to verse 25. But some man, uh, but some man came and reported to them, saying, Listen, the men whom you put in jail are standing right here in the temple and teaching the people. Now, this would stir up those people saying, How can this happen? Supernatural things are happening. Right? They, these, the disciples are seeing supernatural things are happening. 
All right. And then it comes down here. Then Peter and the apostles uh, replied, We must obey God rather than men. And God, the, the God of our forefathers, raised up Jesus, whom you killed and hanged on a tree. Do you see it? Guilt is being pressed upon them. They already thought these thoughts. But now, how is Peter standing up and saying something? By the Holy Spirit. He's saying that which the Father has given him to say. God exalted him to the right hand, to uh, to his right hand, to be prince and leader and savior and deliverer and preserver in order to grant repentance to Israel and to bestow forgiveness and release from sins. Now, these men had the opportunity to repent. But what happens? And we are witnesses of these things. And the Holy Spirit is also. Do you see it? The Holy Spirit is speaking through Peter. And, and here, these priests realize that this anointing comes on them and even causes the gems on, on their, their uh, I don't remember the name of that, but that breastplate that they wear, even a certain gem to light up in that, that they would pray for that while they're doing their service. All of these things, they're used to the Holy Spirit showing up supernaturally. And here, they saw the Holy Spirit speak through Jesus. And here, Peter is speaking by the Holy Spirit. As these things are, are known to us, and we see these things, realize the Holy Spirit comes upon Gamaliel. Gamaliel. A teacher of the law, highly esteemed by all the people, standing up, ordered that the apostles be taken outside for a for a little while. Wait a second, all of the the apostles, all eleven, twelve of them, and and as as we look at these things, how many disciples are there, and and how many people? There's 5,000 now. They've got a crowd, a big crowd. And they're all listening to and setting themselves to hear. They've got a crowd of disciples around about them. Do you see it? It doesn't say those things, but as they're taken outside, then he addresses the council. Men of Israel, take care in regard to what you propose to do to concerning these men for before our time he goes through these different people that rose up and one of them is in the time of the census that man that was during the time of the the census did he did he did he regard that it was time for the the Christ to come and he was maybe stirring up getting ready for the Christ to come. Or maybe he heard that the Christ had come and he's he's stirring up a group of people to a military force to do something. As you see these different things, but if it is of God, Gamaliel says, you will not be able to stop or overthrow or destroy them. You might even be found fighting against God. Now, they were they had a little wisdom to themselves and they they were so convinced by him it says they were convinced by this that the holy spirit brought through gamaliel you see there's different people here carrying that anointing working with the holy spirit taking the thoughts of god acting on wasn't that something that seems to bring peace for a bit here. Realize that they flog them. They whip them. They, they scourge them, as would be seen, right? They flog them. So then they, they, uh, then they let them go. So they went out 
from the presence of the council and rejoiced. Would you go out rejoicing? As, as, or, or would you have been saying, God, you didn't protect us. Uh, and, or, or no, they were protected. They were released. They weren't sentenced to death as Jesus was. There, there's different things happening here, different thoughts that could be thrown in here. What didn't get say, said? That they didn't, they, they weren't destroyed, put out of the way. If, they, if the, the 11 or 12 disciples are, are several of them that were disciples, that were apostles, if these that were sent were put out of the way, where would we be today? Is it, is it the, the greatness of the sacrifice that they, they, they were seeing? They were seeing this was good that they got whipped. They, they, do you see it? They, 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 they regard, rejoice that they were being counted worthy to suffer shame and be exposed to disgrace for the sake of his name. That's a good thing, right? Okay, how does the enemy look at this? Oh, you you see this is a good thing to be scourged, whipped, uh, corrected. Uh, how about murdered? Let's, let's just take it all the way. Isn't that what Satan would do? Satan would then see that these are, are oh, let, let, let's just start pushing the heads of authority to kill these guys put them out of the way isn't that better for the satan because if these men that are filled with the spirit seen how jesus did it for three or three and a half years uh only one of them is actually acting maybe the others are acting why does it say all the disciples went and started praying for everybody and everybody got healed? Some of these things we, we skip over, but realize, is it is it God's desire that all of these disciples um, be martyrs? No. There's a martyr's crown, which is, you know, a, a superior thing. Is Paul looked at as being a martyr? Paul, the Apostle Paul, he wrote a good portion of the rest of this Bible, right? That we've got a good number of these letters along with Peter and others, right? So as we see this, the needed amount of, of word written down for us, by the Holy Spirit, inspired word that we need, we need that. We need people to stand up, take their place, and not be getting killed. We need people standing up, taking their place, and not be able to be touched. As Jesus, Jesus is our, 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 our example, not Peter. Jesus never got flogged until it was his time to be offered up which that flogging was for your healing was this flogging for peter's healing or my healing no why is he doing it why is he taking it if you believe isaiah 54 17 if you go black and believe psalms 91 that those are the things that jesus was believing there's a lot of other scriptures back there that that in the Psalms that are talking about the enemy can't touch you, can't touch this, right? As as we see these things, is that where we should be living? In a higher plane, a higher place of authority, taking our position, not being knocked off, not dying because of sickness and disease. Because Jesus bore those stripes that you could be healed. Every man, woman, and child on the planet can be healed, whether saved or not. And if we take our place considering these things, 
This is where we're supposed to stand. As Jesus stood, he walked through the midst of them. They couldn't touch him. They took him to the pinnacle of his town. And we're going to throw him off headlong, off the cliff. And he walked through their midst. How many times did that happen? So many times that they didn't think he could be taken. Judas didn't think he could be taken. I, I, I see and hear the good aspect of receiving a flogging counted worthy to receive. Jesus doesn't need us to receive the flogging. If you're going to receive the flogging, do it worthy of him, definitely. Does he, does he need us to do it? No, there's more that says we, we can be delivered if you believe it. Healing's going to come to you if you believe it. If you get in line with this word, line yourself up, you have to change things on the inside of you because we've been taught a whole different way by the people that have went before us. How, how did the devil work into, let's just say the Catholic Church and the churches of old, poverty? Poverty, it, it, you go ask any Jewish person. I, I would say most Jewish people would say, poverty is not of God. It never has been of God and never will be of God. He's not that way. He's the God of surplus. He's the God of provision for you. As, it, as we see that God would have to change his name, which would cause mean he's ceasing to exist being who he was because you think he's something else no he is who he has been that's why he revealed himself all these different ways so we can trust in whom he was before whom he will be today we have his word on it we can stand on that word and that's what we're doing today we're seeing these things from his word. Now, now look at this last verse. Yet, in spite of the threats, they never ceased for a single day, both in the temple area or at home. And at home, it says, to teach and to proclaim the good news, the gospel of Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah. Now, that's the anointed one and his anointing. They were proclaiming Jesus was anointed, died for this purpose, so you could be saved. Take and make his sacrifice your own and live right here with us as disciples of the Most High God. So we always want you to remember that God loves you and we at that church love you and Jesus is Lord. Now take your place. As you take his anointing to your world, following his direction. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us today. Be blessed.